So here's the Chinese puzzle. This is the maxi prop parts before you put the the blades on. So I'm not going to take like this and sit there and grind on all this until it's super shiny. I feel like if you do that, it just wears the metal down after time. So every time you do it, a little layer of metal off, little, and then you everything starts to get out of spec after a long time. Because this thing right here is at least 35 years old. I mean, it's as old as the boat, and the boat was built in, what, 1984? Yeah. So I was 17 years old, and I'm 55. That's how old this is. So I'm just take Dawn liquid soap, take a brush, get all the old grease out, and clean it up. And like, see, there's old grease. And it takes this type of grease is the type of grease it calls for. So I'm going to put the right type of grease in. And then over here is the rest of the prop. You see, everything's numbered. Like this is number one, this is number one in this line, and then this little thing here has to be lined up for number one. Everything has a number. It all has to go back together. And you see all these numbers? All these numbers have to line up to letters. certain letters have to line up to certain spots to get the pitch right. And so let's see if I can get this all back together. I'm pretty sure I can because when I took it all apart, see, I marked everything. So it's going to go back together, right? As long as you, I, I wouldn't even have to look at these letters because I've marked everything with a marker. Get a little video of this. At that mark you've got to get one of those metal welding markers that marks on metal it's kind of like fingernail polish and it that way it doesn't get worn away don't be trying to use black permanent marker go get one of those metal it's you can get them at Harbor Freight it's just a little pin for metal and it's yellow so if the corrosion is too bad just get your little wire brush and that, this slides on the shaft and the keyway. Because you the keyway is one of the places where it, it kind of corrodes up because it's two different types of metal. The keyway stainless steel. And this is bronze. So because I guess maybe they I don't know, the bronze may be too soft, so they used for a keyway, so they used stainless steel. I mean, So now I gotta go back and rinse it off because I've got corrosion in those gears. So I gotta go wash all that off. Okay. So I did take a grinder, not a grinder, but a wire. I cleaned the, the keyway up. And if you remember, I put a little mark on it to where I know where it goes back and goes back the way it was it's probably not important but who knows now see it's like the little keyway and this has got like a little slot slides up in there and that way this thing that's keeps it from from spinning and somebody at some point has decided that that nut this nut that goes on it 
right here needed to be tighter. So they had gone, they had drilled a hole in it in the shaft. So there's like a one big hole where it used to be, and then there's one small hole where it had drilled a hole to make it tighter. So we're gonna see what's going on because probably it does wear out. This this thing wears out on the inside, and as it wears out, you have to make it, it just slides up a little bit more, a little bit more over time. So let's go clean this thing up. See, the you know, the most important thing when you have this all apart is to get all the grease and old, old stuff off of it. Now this thing's got threads in it. So clean, get that, clean those threads out with a little real fine wire brush. Get all that old stuff out of there. Now when I said don't take, you know, a little wire brush like that to clean stuff up, that's one thing. But don't be taking a sander and sanding the shit out of it. Or a grinder with a little wire wire brush on it. I don't think that's a good plan. Maybe on the once you get it all on and you want to clean your prop. Like if you were going to put prop speed on it, you have to sand it all down the outside of it. With I think 80 grit sandpaper until it's perfect. Then the prop speed will stick to it. So if you're trying to use prop speed... Or something like that you know it's a must you have to do it but I'm not putting prop speed I'm gonna go put there's this spray paint that you get at Home Depot it's just a zinc gray spray paint it's just zinc I'm spray painting it with that and it'll last about a year so now everything gets grease so this is what it looks like and it's like a I don't know it's a soft grease it's not heavy it's not heavy like axle grease so I'm just gonna do the threadings so now the grease grease is going up in here because that's where the gears are so and this thing is backwards. You see, it spins on the opposite. And I can feel burrs in there as I put it on. So if you <coughs> wanna sit there and rub on your burr and kind of get it out. Cause next time when you take this off, it might, you, you wanna be able, you want it to come off easy. So anything you can do to make your job a little easier and I, now I have to figure out where the line, the holes line up. And this thing, you're not trying to, there's a flat spot here and a flat spot here. Let me go get the right thing. All right, you don't need a wrench this big, but this is what I use to, to, for my rigging. But I don't, now you have to figure out where that hole lines up as you tighten this up. I don't know how. See, look, it's, it's going on a bit. I think that's, I don't know. I think I need light. I can't see. I had if you guys ever see me with gla glasses on all the time, I probably go through one of these pair of glasses every week or two. And that's why you always see me with goofy glasses on cuz I, I buy them from Walmart for 8 bucks cuz I they last like 2 weeks and I throw them away. If that when I was doing the fiberglass epoxy work, I went through two pair and just two one every day because you'd get epoxy and stuff all on the lenses. Let me step away from the camera for a minute to figure out how to get to uh, get this lined up and then I'll be back. 
So from the old original hole, I had to turn it, it probably got turned an extra quarter quarter of an inch to get the other new hole that the whoever drilled to line up. So I have it lined up. And you know, it's still not super tight. I mean, it. I don't think it matters that it's super, super tight. And now I have to figure out a way because the key, whatever was in it is missing. There was, there's no, well, not a key. I don't know what would you call that? A, there's supposed to be like a little pin that runs through there and it probably should shear off if under extreme load. And you know, it's, it's from to keep this from loosening it up. But you see these, this gear here, this gear goes. And look, you see how I put, there's the mark. All I have to do is line that back up with that to that. I know I have it right. And I'm pretty sure it's Z, I can't see it. But when you set it here, and if I look at the numbers to where right there, there's a line. You see that line right there? That'll line up with one of these numbers. And I'm pretty sure it was V. So if I line that up there, look at where that lines up. It's V. And that's what it is, because I remember it's V. And the other one lines up on B. So like there's V, T, S. So every time I turn that, it's going to change the pitch or something. It's going to change something on the on the prop. So I don't have a pin, but you know on a sailboat, these little little pins that slide in and keep things from turning. I just found one that's pretty good size. I'm just going to straighten it out and put it in there. So you can't like if this one would have fit if I wouldn't have cut it apart and slid it in there. But the head, you can't, come over here. The head will stick out and that won't slide on there. So it has to be level on both ends. So let's stick this, let's straighten this out. And Slide it in there. Find out where you got to cut it to make it. And see, that's pretty tight because you want it a little tight because you don't want it to come sliding out and rubbing against the inside of this, because this is gonna slide over it. If that's just hanging down, that thing's spinning, it's gonna rub a line in it. So there it is, see how tight that went in there? You gotta make sure you can't be putting no loose ass shit in there. So then I'm gonna cut that off. It says not to put, too, like just pack it plumb full of grease because it makes it stiff. But this grease seems, I don't know. It seems pretty wet, if you ask me. So there's the line right there. See it? See that line? The line's right up to the letter V. The 
next step, if I remember right, because I'm going on memory here, are these two pieces. Go over this, like this. Does it go like this? Or does it go like this? So that goes over it. <laughs> Some way or the other. Like that. Yes. There. And see, look. Come over on this side. See how I got that line to line up? That'll line up. So when I put those pieces over there, that prop on, that has to be there, and everything has to have lined up on numbers and stuff. So I think if you go here, there's B. You see that big dot? B lines up with that dot. All right, so I rub grease all over this just put a film of grease and then i put about that much grease on it i'm not going to go pack in that thing so full of grease that i mean look it's already having issues closing up yeah see it's already having issues closing up because there's too much grease in it now so let's remove a little bit of grease Still having issues with there. That's that's tight. I think I'll take it apart one more time. Look at that. It's like that's that's how precise that stuff is. If it's sucking like that. Like this to get some more some of it out because I think you're just trying to find that sweet spot on just the right amount of grease and not too much because I'm telling you you put too see that's it right there it spins better now than it did the last time I think that people say on on some of the videos that I've watched, if you get too much, you try to pack that grease in there super tight and then bolt it all together tight, it puts, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to spin good. So now those four bolts and these two bolts is what goes in there. And if you can see, well, those, well, that one, that one doesn't have one, but these, see how it has a little, they have little holes to where you have to put little keys in there to keep them from spinning around and coming out. These are that way, These they're all, all of them are that way, except for this one. For some reason, this is the oddball. So don't ask me why that one doesn't have one. So there's four bolts that are the same size. Two have holes in them to where you can put a key in there. And these two don't. I think, I'm not for sure, but I'm guessing. The two here, you can't get grease in there. If you took these out and tried to push grease in that hole, it's just going into a shaft where it's threaded. These you take out, I think you can put a zerd in there and squeeze grease. That way you can get grease inside this. So these are the ones I'm guessing that don't have the key, the holes in them to where you can keep them from spinning out. Seems odd that you just have them all. And plus, see this goes in so far that there's really no place. If I put this one over here, you wouldn't be able to get the little metal clip in it. So that's it, I'm positive. And 
this one. And there, see, there's the hole. There's a little hole. And so a little, a little pin will go in there and keep that from spinning out. All right, so then there's two more right here. Two in the back are smaller bolts. And you see what I'm talking about? It has holes drilled all through it to where wherever you end up it being tight, you'll have access to one of these holes. And it's the same d deal. It's on the end. The ends are threaded down into metal. These, if you unthread them, I bet they thread over, but there's a space in between there to where you can get grease in those little grooves that you've seen when we were putting it together. Okay, so I got all the blade blades cleaned up and all the grease off of everything. So do you see how that little piece right there has one, two, and three? These blades are numbered. There's a, right here, there's a number. So three goes to three. And then this is one. One goes to one. And then on this thing, that it, what this sets in, what this sets in, it's numbered. So it's like two. And then so everything has to be lined up with its numbers. And then when you come over here to this, this is numbered. So this, I don't know, can you see it? It says two right there. And then there's one. So when you pick it up, you've got to get it to line up with the numbers on this. And your number B, well, I'm, my number is B lines up with this little up in there there's a little dot but see i made a line so that i'm gonna keep that in line i'll probably put a piece of tape right here to, a piece of duct tape to keep this from moving as i slide it on there so the next thing is to do is get all the numbers right get it all greased up put the duct tape on that for it won't move and see if I can pick it all up at one piece and slide it on. See, so now everything is greased up and everything's lined up. So two to blade two, and then this is, uh, if you go underneath there and look, that's two. So everything is numbered right. And also you have to remember you don't want to turn the, you got to have this blade setting in here the right way because you could flip the blade over. And when you put it on, you'll know it's not right. But I'm pretty sure I got it right. So now let's pick it up and set it on there and see how easy it is to do with one person. Because then it won't work right. It'll it, it won't want to fold and it won't open and close when you're sailing. Because this thing's designed to to once the engine's off, this is designed to go this way. That way the water goes over it. I'll show you. All right. So see. That's what it's designed to do. And look at that. It's not right. Something's off. See, it's not right. You see that? Those supposed to line up with that. So now we take it off, figure out why it's not lining up. I thought I didn't have the blades right, I guess. Yay, yay, yay. Ah, darn it. See? They're backwards. 
So that's, they're backwards. So the blades need to be turned the other way. God darn it. All right, I had to go back to the videos we made when I was taking this apart. And when I took this apart, I marked this line when this is in the feathered position. So the feathered position is when it's open like this to where the water can travel over it. Cause see, like this way is probably reverse and this way is full. So when you put it back on, you line that up and it's on B, you, you can take this cap, you can pull this cap back maybe about that far and then these will spin and you can get them into the gear. And that way you can get them all in place to where they line up on the feather position with that on the line and then shove it up on there. And you know, like I said, all these are numbered. The reason they're numbered is because they balance it. And once they get it balanced, they number everything. That way, when you put it back together, it's still balanced. So that's what the deal is with the, with the numbering. And so the only thing left to do is, is to put this anoid on. And that anoid goes on right there. Now, you have to make sure you have good contact with that bronze. So you can maybe a little bit of sand, sandpaper and then make sure you sand the bottom of the anoid and then you just bolt it on there and that's it. So maybe on this little plug, the grease plug, you can put some lana coat on it because, and that'll help it to keep things from corroding up. And if you want, anywhere where those the stainless steel is, you can just put a little dab of lana coat on all of those if you want to. Then wipe it down with acetone and then do whatever you're gonna do. If you're gonna spray paint it with zinc or if you were gonna use prop speed, you'd have to sand it all down, but I'm not doing that. I don't even like sanding on it at all anyway. It just seems like it wear it down, wear it down after time. So that's the end of the video. So there's only a couple more things to do when we go back into the water. I have to hook the batteries back up, put the gap this, the, on the dripless up there. I have to put the, the packing. packing in it. So I have to repack that, hook the batteries up, repack, hook up the muffler on the engine, what was the last thing and and the put the platform back on for the pulleys for the steering under the pedestal and then tighten up all the wires for the steering and that's it she's done come pick her up paint the bottom of the keel and we'll be back in the water in four or five days and then i can start doing whatever so we're heading off to florida we get down to florida i'm going to start taking the teak off the deck and redoing the decks. So thanks for watching.